Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.0. In this video I'm going to talk about functions as macros in Snowman. Now Snowman is one of three story formats that comes with Twine 2.0. To change story formats, if you're looking at the editor interface, you click on the title and it gives you different options. Underneath editing the story JavaScript, editing the story style sheet, you see changing the story format. Now like I mentioned, Twine 2.0 comes with three different story formats by default. We have Harlow, Snowman, and Sugarcube. And you see I've checked Snowman, because that's what I'm going to be using in this video. So starting the story. So Snowman is unique in that it doesn't supply any macros, and it doesn't understand TwineScript. So if you're used to using things in Harlow, like the set macro, it doesn't exist in Snowman. The same with Sugarcube as well. Like if you would be setting different options using the link macro, the actions macro, or different things like that, none of those exist within Snowman. It has none of it. So in place of all those decisions made for you of different functionality and different macros you can use, in Snowman you can use whatever HTML, CSS, or JavaScript you want nearly anywhere you want. However, it's a freedom that can be pretty confusing to new users because it doesn't have any macros, running code is not as obvious perhaps as it should be coming from the other default, especially Harlow story formats. Coming to Snowman gives you lots of options, but with that freedom you sort of need to generate whatever you're going to do yourself. Within Snowman, we think, some, we think in terms of script tags and JavaScript instead of writing macros. And for the most part, we need to write our all need to write our own code too, any functions we use, any things that will act as macros as I'm, as I'm going to show in this video, we need to write all that code, it doesn't exist in Snowman. So using the script tag. So unlike Harlow or Sugarcube story formats, the script tag, that is an HTML element that allows you to run JavaScript, you put the JavaScript within it, within it and it is, it's run as soon as the browser sees it. So like I said, in order to run some JavaScript immediately, we can have script tags. But we couldn't use them in the Harlow or Sugarcube formats, but we can within Snowman. Snowman is the only one of the three that we can use a script tag directly within it. All story formats in Twine 2.0 also come with a jQuery JavaScript library as well. So anything you can do within jQuery, you can also do in the JavaScript of the all three different story formats and within the passages in Snowman. For example, if we wanted to change the background color, as I did here, of the element with the ID of passage, which is this element within Snowman, we can change it, as I did, when the passage renders by having the code run immediately. So I have a script tag within this passage, and it's run as soon as the passage was rendered. When Twine got to it and showed it, it ran that code, that script tag. And it ran this example code right here. So it says, using jQuery, notice the little dollar sign, look for something that has the ID of passage. Within its CSS, change the property background color to gray. And so it did. It changed the passage to the background of gray. We can use the script tag to do a, a number of very powerful things. If you think of it in terms of when you arrive to a passage that script is immediately run, we can basically do anything we can do in JavaScript. We can do in Twine using the script tag and using jQuery to do a large number of very powerful things. However, <laughs> when it comes to creating larger projects, we need to start to think in terms of modules and how we can reduce the total amount of code. So, for example, because we can use the script tag in any passage within Snowman, we might get into the habit of having lots of script tags in every different passage to do a number of different things, and that can get very tedious to write and very complex and complicated to debug. So we need to think of ways in terms of objects and attributes and functions that are part of JavaScript that can help us reduce our total complexity of the project. We also want to follow a dry approach. We don't want to repeat ourselves. We want to write things in one place 
or at a minimum in two places and then have us call those functions or use those objects over and over again, much like we, we would use macros that are written once and we can call them whenever in passages and the other storage formats, we want to follow a similar approach for using JavaScript and the script tags within Snowman. So, <laughs> a lot of howevers in this video. However, as I outlined in another video, the using JavaScript within Snowman video within this tutorial series, functions used in script tags have a bit of a problem in Snowman and that you can't call them outside of that passage. Passages, when the script tags are run, exist in different function scopes. You can think about it sort of as in different areas that they're running in the program. They can't talk to each other because they're not sort of neighbors. They're on different parts of the JavaScript street as a sort of a convoluted metaphor there. However, there is a way, there is a way around this. We can add to the document. So one way to get around this problem of function scope is to create something all the functions can see. So in other words, we can bind to an object at a higher scope than any of the script tags. Within a browser, there's a global object called window. Window is in fact the entire window as you conceive of it, including everything that's in the HTML document and different events like clicking on things, it's everything. It's a global object window. There's also a document specific object called document. Very helpful name. So while we can add to the window object is highly, don't do it. <laughs> it is not recommended. Do not do that. Instead, we can add to the document object. So for example, as part of this video, I'm going to be showing how to use the document twine object I created within the story JavaScript. So I'm going to pause this and move back to the code to show you that. So as I mentioned at the very beginning, if we click on the title menu, we have a number of different options. The first one was to edit the story JavaScript. And I've done that. So as I mentioned at the top here, Twine2 comes with jQuery. We can also create a global document-wide Twine object by creating Twine object on document. So document.twine is an empty object. We can then add our functions to the object by simply adding new properties to that object. In this case, I've written a replacement for replace, uh, a pretty common function within both Harlow and Sugarcube is we want to replace something due to a click or some other actions. So I've created sort of a, a functional replacement for replace within Snowman here and that you call it as it's a function that is a property of the document twine object we supply it with an ID or a class name something jQuery can look for and then a replacement text and then this is a jQuery function that for whatever it finds the ID or the class or something with the attributes whatever jQuery can search for edit its HTML and replace it with whatever we passed in with the replacement text. So it works just like replace would within Harlow or within Sugarcube. We call it, we hand it some replacement text that can include HTML and it's replaced. Okay, so let's go back to the story. Okay, so we're looking at the document twine object and I created a replace function. So remember as I mentioned at the start of the previous passage that the document twine object as part of document is at the one of the highest scopes within JavaScript. So we can basically call it anywhere. We just need to call the longer name document.twine dot whatever function name or in this case replace. So the reason for that and as another warning here is that passage transitions are much more explicit within Snowman. So for example within Harlow or Sugarcube we can use the link macros in both cases create links that don't go anywhere. That you just click on something and it runs some code or you click on something and it does something else, right? Within Snowman, passage transitions are incredibly explicit. That is, if it's a passage transition like this one here that my mouse is over, when I click it, I go to another passage. There's sort of no in-between. You're either looking at a passage or you're clicking to go to another passage. Those are sort of the two main options. 
So we need to keep that in mind when using the script tag because as I mentioned earlier, when we get to a passage and it's rendered, the script tag is run immediately. So to show you this example of using the replace function that's acting as macros would in other story formats, I have to have this whole introduction passage here to show you the text that it will be replaced when the next passage is rendered. <laughs> kind of confusing. So this little example here, I have some text that I'm going to replace when I click on replace the text. So I'll click on it and the text is replaced. Ta-da! <laughs> the text is replaced through a call to document.twine.replace. So let's close this and as a conclusion here, let's wrap up by looking at the code again. So as I mentioned, pulling up the story JavaScript, I've created a function that is a property of the document twine object I created, which means I can call it anywhere within the story. Then in the replace the text passage example here, I have a span that has the ID replace and I have a script tag Within the script tag, I have two lines here. I'm setting the variable replace to be this entire string, and then I'm calling the document twine replace function that is acting similar to a macro would in the other story formats. I'm supplying the jQuery search term, the ID with the name replace, similar to how replace works in SugarCube, by the way, and supplying it with something to replace whatever I wanted with. So I have the variable replacement, that is the argument call the argument used in this function. So we call the function, we say what we want to look for, what we want to replace, and then it does it. And you saw, if I debug this, running this just running just this passage, it immediately gets replaced. Before we can even see it, in fact, it, because it immediately gets run using the script tag. So those are just a couple of different ways to think about functions as if they were macros within Snowman. We can run them using the script tag in any passages. We can write different functionality and have it run immediately. We can also bind things to the document object. Like for example, I have the document.twine object I created and create and added functions as properties to that object and then I can call them anywhere. Or we can combine the two, like I did in this very last example to replace the text. I'm using both the script tag to run something within a passage, and I have a more global function that I'm calling within that script tag within that passage. A couple of different ways to think as functions or think of functions as macros within Snowman. They're really not, but because but because Snowman has such a great freedom we have to think more in terms of the underlying framework of Twine in terms of JavaScript and HTML and CSS. But we also have this, this great layer of the passage transitions. Like you saw when I ran the story, we still can click on links to go to different passages. But we have to think of the passages in a way as sort of their own separate HTML pages. So we can have different CSS, we can have different script, but we still have the passage functionality each thing. Thanks for watching.